Hi Rhea, how you doing? Uh, nice talking to you again. Um, about the uh, whole uh, things you should and shouldn't be doing, that the, the things that your parents tell you. Uh, it, it, every parent is different and where they learn their stuff is uh, from different places. So uh, <laughs> it really depends on who your parent is that, that, and where they've learned their stuff. That depends on what they tell you. Some Most mothers uh, is will tell you not to eat things off the floor. It doesn't matter how long it's been on there. It's usually the guys who will say, oh, five seconds, it doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, Mythbrothers actually did a whole uh, uh, a whole uh, episode on that. And it turned out that, uh, depending on the condition of the floor, it, um, five seconds really doesn't that make that much of a difference if, if, if it's on the floor. But... There's always the issue to better be safe than sorry, uh, just in case, just in case uh, something is picked up. It's uh, the I think where the issue comes in is is whether or not um, if you drop something on the floor uh, and you're and you're cooking it, uh, whether or not you can put it back into the dish and cook it and still cook it. Um, uh, because you're cooking, if you cook it long enough, you can cook off any germs. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any flavor difference with it. Uh, that that's sort of a matter of debate, but my general rule is as soon as something drops on the floor, well, that's it, and so long, farewell, Alvita, and goodbye. That's kind of the way I, I view things. I don't really uh, uh, like to uh, have stuff dropped on the floor and then eat it afterwards. Uh, as for chewing gum, the, the, the argument of the chewing gum, this is sort of anything that sort of was really... Uh, either indigestible or difficult to digest for your body system. Uh, gum would be one of the more thing, more difficult things to digest. Uh, and although it does digest, it, more often than not, it would simply pass through your system just the way any other inedible object would pass through your system. So it's not as if it's good, your body is going to actually absorb uh, or or really digest it. You're going to try to digest it, but more often than not, it's not going to digest, and a large chunk of it will actually end up simply passing through the system. Uh, as for cracking your knuckles, the debate is kind of out because uh, it's not really known whether or not you can. This is primarily the, the cracking your knuckles primarily has the issue primarily has to do with arthritis uh, later on in life, but that's in your fifties uh, and sixties, and the debate is out whether or not that will actually do that. Ironically enough, playing tennis enough uh, or any doing any repetitive exercise, if it's not done properly, or even if it is done properly, uh, can cause you to get arthritis, arthritis later on in life. Injuries that occur uh, in childhood and heal up and are no problem during adulthood uh, actually come back later on in life and become an issue. So, uh, you know, hip issues... Um, a lot of a lot of people when you see people uh, a lot of people going for knee surgery, that's actually because of an injury that's actually come back again. It's as the body starts to deteriorate, uh, one of the first areas that start to go are the areas that were initially injured. So, the argument in terms of uh, how to have a better uh, senior life, while well, the less injury, injuries you can have, the better. In other words, the more injuries you end up having uh, now as a younger person even though you can bounce, bounce back from it, what happens later on in life, it does come back and it does propose an issue. Uh, other things is, you know, they've got to be careful with studies because studies in many cases won't actually tell you anything. They just simply, studies suggest this and studies suggest that, but they don't really come up with anything, you know, firm or, or this is what's going to happen to you. Uh, because studies can never do that. Studies are never d really designed to uh, give a person information. They're really designed to, uh, in many ways, uh, convince the public that this research institute is doing a good job and that the public funding that they're receiving should continue on coming to that, that, that research facility. So more often than not, studies are not uh, uh, actually scientific. They're more or less ads for a research institute in order to keep its funding alive. So that's what you got to watch out for when you hear a study on, 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 on the air or on TV uh, or on the internet. More often than not, it's a sales pitch to keep their funding going.
Anyways, uh, that's it for today. I'll talk to you later. Hey, bye.